We continue on with our NHL offseason plan series. Today we're looking at the 28th place team from the NHL's regular season, the New Jersey Devils. What do they have for cap space? Who are their expiring contracts? And what are the top burning questions facing this franchise as they approach the offseason? We'll look into all that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, today we're taking a look at the New Jersey Devils and exploring their off-season plans and what they might be up to as the off-season gets into full swing here in the not-too-distant future. Now, if in case you're new to this series or haven't caught any of the prior videos, essentially how this is going to work is we're dividing this into four segments. The first segment, we're going to do a quick recap on the NHL's regular season for this team, take a look at how they did. Secondly, we're going to examine their salary cap space. Uh, thirdly, we're going to look at expiring contracts that need to be addressed this offseason and then finally the top questions facing the franchise as they really dig into uh, business for the offseason so let's get started with the New Jersey Devils regular season recap here from the 21-22 NHL season so obviously we know 28th best is not very good they finished with a 27 46 and 9 record for 63 points so not very good certainly I think a lot of fans in New Jersey themselves expect it to be doing a little bit better than this but they, uh, they certainly fell short through a variety of reasons. Uh, the goals for were not as bad as a lot of their other statistics. They scored 245 goals for 19th best. Goals against were 302, though, 29th best. So that's certainly uh, a problem area for sure. The power play was not overly good at 15.6%, which was 28th best across the NHL. But the penalty killing was respectable at 802 for 14th best so certainly a few things there that were you know relatively decent uh whereas you know some things that are major major issues of course we did see a few changes within the devil's organization didn't see a whole lot for trades this year uh we did see them announced uh, recently here that the assistant coaches mark recce was uh, relieved of his duties and alan nazardine who was at one point was the interim head coach and then an assistant coach as also as contracts not being renewed so both those Assistant coaches will not be back. At this point, we don't know about head coach Lindy Ruff. He's still being evaluated, and we haven't heard a firm decision from GM Tom Fitzgerald on his future. Now, we'll get into that a little bit further here in the last segment. Looking at their salary cap space, the Devils did finish the season with a decent amount of salary cap space available. They finished with a $74.1 million used, which means they had $7.35 million available now for the upcoming 22-23 season at this point they only had 57.1 million dollars used so they have 25.3 million dollars available so that's a fair bit of uh, flexibility that they have they do have a little bit of dead cap space as well so that's factored into the availability amount so of course you add up the availability and the used amount it doesn't completely come to the uh, the 82.5 that's expected to be available for teams next year they still have a two million dollar dead cap hit for Corey schneider's buyout and they're also dealing with a two point uh or, or 250 thousand dollar uh for the Ilya kovalchuk contract as well uh so that gives them 2.5 million dollars in uh, dead salary cap space which is still something they're going to be dealing with here for a little bit of time. Now let's jump over to the next segment and take a look at their expiring contracts of their RFAs and UFAs. And I do have a fair bit of players that are needing new deals. On the RFA side of things, they have Jesper Bratt, who's turned out to be one of their top young players. So he's certainly an important piece. Uh, he definitely is going to be signed and hopefully at a longer term for them. Of course, you have Pavel Zaka and Miles Wood, both RFAs as well. I would think that they're both possibly trade chips this summer but we'll see uh obviously no guarantee that they're traded either way they'll get a contract and continue on with their nhl careers i know miles wood has certainly had his fair share of injuries whereas zaka at this point it, it just seems like they don't really know where he fits in their lineup and think maybe a fresh start somewhere else for the former high first overall or first round pick sorry would be beneficial so we'll see where that goes uh fabian zetterlin who certainly came on this year and had more opportunity uh needs a new contract as well along with jesper bokefist so i would think that all of those players are going to get signed and qualified but i wouldn't be shocked if wood and zaka are possibly trade chips now when it comes to the ufas we're going to start with jimmy vc likely doesn't return 
Mason Gertzen likely doesn't return. P.K. Subban coming off his $9 million contract expiring, probably not returning. Uh, Colton White is actually a Group 6 free agent, which means he has not played in enough NHL games to qualify as an RFA. So, therefore, he's a Group 6 UFA uh, player who can sign anywhere. And both goaltenders, um, uh, Andrew Hammond and John Gillies, also both qualify as UFAs this coming season. Now, looking at the top burning questions facing this team going into the offseason, as I mentioned before, number one to me is who's the coach? Is it Lindy Ruff? Or is it somebody else? We know that the staff will be at least partially different next year with uh, obviously Recky and Nazardine not returning. Uh, to me, we saw comments from Jack Hughes indicating just how much he likes Lindy Ruff and how much he's helped them. Uh, it was basically like an endorsement, so to speak. So to me, I think there's a good chance Lindy Ruff does come back. I know Tom Fitzgerald talked a bit about the fact that how much they, um, they, they thought he did a good job with the young players, which is certainly a big, important piece of this team. And when you're getting uh, an endorsement unsolicited from Jack Hughes, to me, that carries a lot of weight as well. They're going to want their young players to be happy. And if they're you know quite uh, happy with the current coach and seeing a lot of growth, and he has, then that's something they're going to really factor in here. So to me, it's a matter of time, but I, at this point, am leaning towards the fact that Lindy Ralph probably is a coach. But the question is, for how long? I'm not really sure how much longer they can continue to uh, not have as much success before they'll make a change, but maybe things get turned around. We'll have to see. Another big question facing this franchise is goaltending. Who are your goaltenders next year? I mean, Tom Fitzgerald made it clear during his end-of-season media availability that they need an NHL-quality goalie who they can rely on and play a lot of games and get some big saves from, and he didn't know who that was. So that goes to show you that the relationship with uh, with Blackwood is questionable. I know Merrick and Freeman have both made mention in the 32 Thoughts podcast that there seemed to be some strain or awkwardness between the relationship between the goalie and the team. Uh, not necessarily a one-sided issue, but you know Freeman made mention that there could have been things done differently on both sides over the past few years to make this a better relationship, and it wasn't obviously the case. So certainly you have to think that they have concerns over his ability to be the leading number one goaltender, play a large bulk of games, stay healthy, and uh, you know, and get them the the victories when needed. And they have concerns if he can be that guy at this point. They don't know about Jonathan Bernier, who missed all of last season with hip surgery. Can he play? Will he resume? We don't know. So to me, I would not be one bit surprised if we see, um, you know, a trade involving bringing in another good quality NHL goaltender. So we'll see how they decide to address that. But it very well could be, uh, you know, will Blackwood be back or will he be traded? Or do they want to bring in a goalie to work with Blackwood as a 1A, 1B? Which to me, I think is the better way to go. I think Blackwood can still be a really good goaltender. But if he has somebody there to play, uh, you know, a fair bit of games, challenge him and take the pressure off, would probably be better for both sides. But we'll see how they decide to go about addressing their goaltending. But that's a big question they need to answer, and they need to answer it fairly quick. Now, of course, are you going to be making some trades? Uh, who are some trade places on this team? Well, you're looking at Miles Wood, you're looking at Pavel Zaka, and you're looking at Andreas Janssen. Both, all three of those players are potential trade chips they could use to find upgrades in other areas of the team. Uh, we know that Zaka is a player who they still like, but are struggling to find where he fits long term. And when it comes to Janssen and Wood, I think it's just a matter of consistency um, and finding a, you know, a spot. They have a lot of good young players that are coming up here. I mean, Jack Hughes is really taking some steps forward. Of course, Nico Heischer, hopefully he can stay healthy as well. You saw Dawson Mercer take some big steps. Uh, Brat, Sharon Govich, they get Alexander Holtz on the way. Um, you know, it's a matter of time here that they need some of these guys who are not necessarily uh, bottom six players. It's fine to, uh, ways to move them along and bring in some other players that mix better in other areas of the team, in my opinion. But those are your players that are most likely but con consider trade bait this offseason. You know, will they incorporate more youth into this lineup and who they have for other youth who they are confident in can take a roster spot in the fall? That will obviously determine how much of a, you know, uh, change we see within the roster of the other, other more experienced NHL players, right? Obviously, Alexander Holtz did get a, a touch of NHL time this year, but he was a point-per-game player in the AHL, looked really solid. To me, he's likely, you know, an excellent candidate for a full-time NHL season next year. Uh, Fabian Zetterlin, who's also an RFA, had a real solid year, 
had more NHL time, uh, looked decent at times. Plus, had a real solid season in the AHL when he was playing there as well. To me, those are two more players you could probably can pencil in as likely having a good shot at having a full time role next season. Like I said, on top of that, you've got Brat, you got Serengovich, you've got Mercer, you got Jack Hughes, you got Nico Heischer. Uh, you know that that's uh, a really good looking group of. Uh, of top six or top nine players. So you don't really have a lot of open spots there. Um, so I can see them maybe, you know, doing a little bit of swapping uh, through some of the other guys I mentioned and kind of rounding out your roster. Now, and like another thing here, as I mentioned as well, is, uh, you know, the first round pick. It's been talked about that Tom Fitzgerald is open to trading his first round pick, especially if it's not a number one or number two overall, if they do not, if they do not win the uh, draft lottery. So, uh, he made it known that for the last couple of years that something they were willing to consider for the right impact player who can have an immediate impact on the roster and help them take a big step forward. So there was a lot of talk in Vancouver hockey now of could that be JT Miller, who we know might be available in Vancouver based on remarks from Jim Rutherford. If they don't get a contract extension in place, Rutherford made it known that he's going to trade Miller, that he wants to sign him, but if an extension can't be worked out, a trade is likely going to happen to get the necessary assets. I mean, Miller's coming off a 99-point season. Um, you know, a phenomenal player, still with lots of uh, gas in the tank, even though he's approaching, uh, you know, 30 years old. Uh, it's a situation that he could be a guy to really help take the Devils game up a notch. I mean, for sure, he's got his engine that never stops, a real hard player to play against, real solid offensively, um, you know, just a, a good leader all around. And he might be a guy that they target. Now, now, another name they could also use this first round pick on to get an impact player could be Kevin Fiala in Minnesota. As talked about in the 32 Thoughts segment on Hockey Night in Canada by Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick, we know that the Minnesota Wild are going to be facing a cap crunch. We know how important Fiala has been to the Wild after having a real solid 85-point campaign. Uh, we know that last year they had a real tough time going through contract negotiations. Many feel there's a good chance Fiala could be dealt, uh, but at the same time, there's many that feel that the Wild need to do everything they can to retain this player since he's so impactful and helpful to their franchise. So it's going to be tough to see what they do, but considering that Fiala is much younger than Miller, uh, obviously has a much probably longer term upside, uh, it would make more sense to use that pick on a player more in that age bracket. Of course, they also mentioned, which kind of makes sense. Of course, uh, he's you know fellow, co fellow countryman to Nico Heischer, the captain of the Devils. Uh, so you know I'm sure that they're familiar with each other as well. So that could go a long way uh, to helping him fit in with the group. And, you know, Fiala would be a tremendous addition. He could be that top six forward that they desperately need now and into the future. So we'll see. They could go a different number of ways, including goaltending. But I think the more likely scenario is that they, if, they, if they do trade this pick, it's going to be on a high impact forward. There could be other players they look at as well. But you have to think that the uh, the few ro the couple of spots that might be open on a roster could be addressed with this first round pick. If they really want to take a step forward, then why wait two, three years for this player from this pick to be an impact player when they can get somebody right away and trade the pick? So we'll see where things go. But to me, New Jersey could be a very interesting, active team. I think we could see some interesting trades. We could see more youth jump into the lineup next year. But they do need to figure out coaching and goaltending. The biggest question marks by far facing this team in the offseason. And depending on the answers to those questions will help determine some of the other things they do and how much level of success they can try to gain next season. It's going to be tough looking at all the teams that are in the playoffs this year and the big mountain they have to climb to try to get into that race. It ain't going to be easy, but it's one step at a time and see how far they can take it next year. So let me know your thoughts on the offseason coming up for the New Jersey Devils down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.